Castillo's here with tonight's final thought. I don't know about you, but I'm not particularly comfortable when somebody tries to tell me that my experiences aren't real, especially personal experiences like, um, you know, love. I mean, I may not have the same exact experiences as, as they do, the same background, but that doesn't really mean that mine aren't real. And that's really what it comes down to, that discussions about reality are difficult to separate from one's own experiences. I mean, some were raised religious and haven't known anything else. Some were raised where religion had no role and they don't feel like they've missed anything. Some have gone from one side to the other and are convinced that their former life was just a big joke. And some from the more militant versions have walked away or stopped practicing and don't think about it enough to do anything about it. And then there are those special ones who have switched from side to side and are still deeply confused. We all want to be or appear to be rational, but at its core, this is a very deeply personal thing. I mean, who are you to tell me that my experience isn't real? That really goes for both sides. If we really believe in the ideals that every person should be choosing their own life's path, then we have to be prepared to let others choose paths that don't really make any sense to us. The best analogy to this problem of dealing with those who aren't from our tribe is like dealing with your best friend's marriage or lifestyle. You may not understand the attraction or even feel like it's an unhealthy relationship, but that's really not your call. If or when they want to talk to you about it, you can lend a ear at first, and if they're open to it, offer your five cents. But it's not your place to tell them who they should or shouldn't be with. And if you really care about them, you'll be there for them to celebrate the happy moments or console them through the sad ones. And hopefully they can offer you the same thing. And that's really it. Anything beyond that isn't your place. This is from one friend to another, from Christian to atheist, or atheist to Christian. Basically, they're living a lifestyle that you don't necessarily understand. And really what it comes down to is whether you're really willing to still be friends. If so, you might be surprised at how deep and meaningful the friendship can be. If you can't be friends because of this one issue, well, that is your choice. Obviously, you aren't close enough to bridge that gap, and that's too bad. But that also makes you all the more ill-qualified to judge the other's lifestyle or relationship. Also, don't make the assumption that your side is either the moral or rational high ground. I've known Christians whom I highly respect for their intelligence and scholarship, and then some Christians who are just egotistical dicks. In surprise, the same happens to be true of the atheist side. And there's nothing that tells me that either side has more of either quality, because guess what? We're all the same species. We're all humans. I remember a Catholic, actually an adult Catholic friend when I was a kid, telling me that he always thought the Protestant girls were looser. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That would be the cardboard cutout version of what people are really like, and not at all helpful. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You can and must choose the road that works best for you. Beyond that, if you don't want someone dictating to you what you should or shouldn't believe in, then maybe you shouldn't do that to others. I've heard that somewhere before. If you really care about them, then your best gift is to be their friend, to be a friend to those who are not of your tribe or of your faith. I'm Joe Bustios, and that's tonight's final thought. Catch you next time.